we are repeatedly told that 97% of the world scientists or climate scientists or something agree that the alarmist scenario is accurate. Barack Obama said they did, but again, he's not a scientist, nor is Leonardo DiCaprio as a director, nor is Al Gore, whose endorsement of the claim in an inconvenient truth certainly gave it enormous prominence. First, isn't there a disagreement among scientists about whether the problem is real or not? Actually, not really. There was a massive study of every scientific article in a peer-reviewed journal written on global warming for the last 10 years. And they took a big sample of 10%, 928 articles. And you know the number of those that disagreed with the scientific consensus that we're causing global warming and that it's a serious problem? Out of the 928, zero. The misconception that there's disagreement about the science has been deliberately created by a relatively small group of people. The claim is everywhere. Craig Itso, Robert Carter, and Fred Singer in Why Scientists Disagree About Global Warming said, probably the most widely repeated claim in the debate over global warming is that 97% of scientists agree that climate change is man-made and dangerous. But they go on, this claim is not only false, but its presence in the debate is an insult to science even though it does appear in such places as NASA's website and on the websites of respected scientific organizations like the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Then Secretary of State John Kerry warned graduating students at Boston College of the, quote, crippling consequences, end quote, of climate change and added, 97% of the world's scientists tell us this is urgent. Now you notice he doesn't even qualify as climate scientists. He says the world's scientists. is claiming that 97% of people who are studying you know, the anatomy of worms, perhaps, or the behavior of polymers under heat and stress are telling us that climate change is urgent. Well, if they are, they're doing it as lay people, not as scientific experts. But it's not even true. Celebrities tell us it's true. We wanted to make a film that made people understand that this is a problem that's happening right now. It's getting worse and worse, and we cannot afford to waste time having people in power that choose to believe in 2% of the scientific community that is basically bought off by lobbyists and oil companies. And the latter is rather nasty in tone, but not untypically. So I ask again, how do Babbitt, DiCaprio, and the others know that there's this overwhelming consensus challenged only by paid hacks? Where did the 97% figure come from? The claim that 97% of scientists or world scientists agree is actually more than a bit slippery and has been thoroughly investigated by groups including Inso Carter and Singer of the Non-Governmental International Panel on Climate Change and, in Canada, the Friends of Science. And it turns out to come from four papers whose methodology is shockingly shoddy. The first to make this claim was Naomi Oreskes, a geologist and historian of science. As the Friends of Science point out, she gave a speech and later wrote a paper for Science, which is a peer-reviewed journal, but her paper was not peer-reviewed, and it was based on a highly unsystematic online search for scientific papers on climate change or global climate change. We're not even sure. Her account of this has varied. And after reading the abstracts of 928 papers, she declared that 75%, not 97%, 75% agreed explicitly with the anthropogenic global warming consensus, as stated in the third assessment report from the International Panel on Climate Change, the UN's panel, that in her words, quote, Earth's climate is being affected by human activities, end quote. And, quote, remarkably, none of the papers disagreed with the consensus position, end quote. Now, you'll notice right away, Earth's climate is being affected by human activities is a great distance away from climate change is primarily caused by humans and is a crisis. But in any event, Benny Pizer of the Global Warming Policy Foundation, who's an anthropologist by training, revisited her results. He found something very different. Only 13 of over a thousand papers explicitly endorsed the alarmist thesis. That's 1.2%. Another 322 implicitly endorsed it, basically accepting it as a premise for research into some impact that it might have. So that's just under 29%. You know, other papers discuss what might be done if it were happening. We're talking about climate change long before humans appeared, actually rejected it, or the largest single group, 470 papers, had nothing to do with it at all. In 2007, Oreskes backed down somewhat, saying 20% explicitly endorsed the consensus that, quote, Earth's climate is being affected by human activities, end quote. 
which again is a far cry from humans being dominant or the impact being catastrophic. As Craig Idso and his colleagues put it, it is now widely agreed Oreskes did not distinguish between articles that acknowledged or assumed some human impact on climate, however small, and articles that supported IPCC's more specific claim that human emissions are responsible for more than 50% of the global warming observed during the past 50 years. The abstracts often are silent on the matter, and Oreskes apparently made no effort to go beyond those abstracts. Oreskes literature review inexplicably overlooked hundreds of articles by prominent global warming skeptics including John Christie, Sherwood Idso, Richard Lindzen, and Patrick Michaels. This business of ignoring dissenting voices is very peculiar, bordering on scientific fraud. High-profile skeptics include a number of Apollo astronauts, such as Walter Cunningham and Buzz Aldrin. Aldrin is a doctor of astronautics from MIT, and Cunningham has a master's and an all-but-dissertation PhD in physics from UCLA. Despite all this, in an Ottawa Citizen editorial board meeting around the year 2000, Elizabeth May told me, uh, In fact, I can count on two hands the number of skeptics that are left in the world. It's continually hired by the, by the same group, um, the fossil fuel industry, uh, the chemical industry, the automotive manufacturers. Another key source for the 97% consensus figure is a survey by Peter Doran and Maggie Zimmerman done in 2009, employing methodology so strange it would have trouble scraping to Daryl Huff's famous How to Lie with Statistics. What they did is they sent an online survey to over 10,000 people. They received over 3,000 replies, 3,146, and they selected from them 79 who self-identified as climatologists. Of those, 76 agreed that it's warmer now than before the 19th century, which is hardly surprising since it measures a trend from the widely recognized Little Ice Age. And then of 77 who answered a second question, do you think human activity is a significant contributing factor in changing mean global temperatures? 75 said yes. And the author said, look, 75 out of 77 is 97%. Yeah, but out of 3,146 it's not, it's 2.38%. So shall we go on? Okay, in 2010, William Andered, who was then three years shy of his PhD with some others, surveyed authors associated with the UN's IPCC, which is a deliberately biased sample to begin with, and yet they found that only 66% were, quote, convinced by the evidence, end quote. That's 903 out of 1,375. Then they looked at the 100 most published or most cited, which again is a biased sample because the journals that they were looking at are controlled, for the most part, by true believers. And the articles that they publish increasingly have bizarrely long lists of co-authors. They found that among the 100 most published, 97% were convinced by the evidence in favor of the IPCC's 2007 Fourth Assessment Report. But notice again that the way that they prove that almost all scientists agree is systematically to weed out the vast number who don't. And as Idso and his colleagues note, alarmists will frequently attack skeptics claiming that they are in the pay of wealthy vested interests. And yet, the United States government alone paid $64 billion to climate researchers during the four years from 2010 to 2013, virtually all of it explicitly assuming or intended to find a human impact on climate and virtually nothing on the possibility of natural causes of climate change. You know, more than 100 years ago, Upton Sinclair uh, wrote this, that it's difficult to get a man to understand something if his salary depends upon his not understanding it. <laughs> so yes, Al Gore is right that people do know on which side their bread is buttered. The problem is most of the butter is going not to skeptics from oil companies, but to alarmists from governments. So there's one more critical study. In 2013, John Cook and others undertook a study looking at nearly 12,000 papers, 11,000 944, or rather, they looked at 11,944 abstracts. They concluded that two-thirds expressed no opinion. 32.6% endorsed anthropogenic global warming, 0.7% rejected it, and 0.3% were unclear. They then asked authors to rate their own papers and found that 35.5% said they had no position, and that 97.2% of those who took a position, quote, endorsed the consensus, end quote. But this paper has been repeatedly rebutted by other scholars. By one count, at least 97 papers had taken issue with its methodology by December of 2014. It turns out that only 64 of the original 11,944 papers explicitly said humans caused most warming since 1950. David Legates found that the real number was just 41. 
or 0.34%, which again falls rather shockingly shy of 97%. What's more, several respondents have spoken up to say that Cook wrongly classified them as supporting the thesis when they don't. People have trouble believing that such a brazen misrepresentation could have been foisted upon them. But in The Neglected Sun, an important book to which we'll return, authors Fritz Varenholt and Sebastian Luning address this point directly. They say, this book aims to investigate the fundamental facts relevant to the climate catastrophe claims proposed by the IPCC and industries with vested interests such as the insurance sector. Prepare yourself for an eye-opening journey through a climate science wild west. You will be surprised to read about scientific distortions that you never would have thought possible in the supposedly enlightened 21st century. The lack of methodological rigor here is bizarre. The lack of definitions, the unrepeatability of results, the changing stories of the authors, this is not science. It's not science partly because, as a number of people have pointed out, science is never settled. That the very notion of scientific consensus is suspect. Scientists debate things often passionately. If we make the most charitable assumption possible, those who repeat this 97% consensus claim have no idea whatsoever what they're talking about and have made no effort to check. Which is like a clock that strikes 13. It calls into question all that has gone before and all that comes after. It is certainly solid grounds for skepticism about other things on which they are equally certain with equally little ground.